Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We are going to be talking about generational gifts. And our goal today is to help everyone on the call learn a little bit more about the gifts that each generation brings to the workplace. Joining me today in this conversation is Dr. Catherine Jeffrey. And Dr. Jeffrey, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. I would love for you to share with our audience what drew you into this field. So I understand that you have a PhD in um, leadership and with a special focus on millennials. So what drew you to that and what makes you an expert on millennials and leadership? Yeah, so I've worked with millennials for about the past 20 years, and the last 10 years, um, well, until a year and a half ago, for 10 years, I was teaching leadership development. And every year I would ask my students, what is the best form of leadership? And I would give them three choices, authoritative, democratic, or laissez-faire. And one year, they all raised their hand, every single student, uh, when I asked about laissez-faire leadership and they thought that was the best the best way to go about it and I sat there going wow this is fascinating 10 years ago that never would have happened even five years ago that wouldn't have happened so what is going on that this shift is occurring and this was right about the time when I was starting to do my dissertation research just beginning some primary research and I decided this was something I really wanted to press into. I really love group dynamics, sociology, and, and um, culture, and bringing those things together. And this was something that fascinated me. So I ended up really honing in on millennials and leadership and teamwork. And I did a qualitative study where I looked into how they view those things and how that's changed over time. And one of the, just I'll share one quick thing that came out of that, that a lot of people find interesting is, you know, we've gone from a very hierarchical understanding of leadership, which makes sense because when many of the organizations were built, there was a war going on. So you needed to know who was in charge and in command, where now millennials view leadership very much in terms of a shared concept and leadership a leader is someone who is holding a specific role and it's something that they you may hold more responsibility when you're in that role but it's a role of facilitation and they're very clear that you don't have any more value than they do if you're the leader you're all equals you're all working together to get to the same place and uh so that's that's just one piece of where how, what's gotten me to study these different generations over time, and it's, it's been a journey. It's really fun. Excellent. Thanks for sharing that story, because it's always interesting to, to understand how people um, kind of acquired their expertise and what makes them passionate about um, where their focus is. So thanks for sharing that story. Yeah, sure. Before we jump into our webinar today, I wanted to remind everybody on the phone of something that we believe, which is you are brilliant. So not only do we have a brilliant panelist in Dr. Katherine Jeffries, but each one of you are an expert in the generation that you come from. And consequently, because you are so brilliant, we love for you to participate. So we're going to have some questions for you, any things that come up for you, like, huh, that's really interesting. I'd never thought of it that way. Whatever you'd like to share, please do so in the chat box. So with that, let's move into our focus. So last conversation that Catherine and I had, we talked a bit about generations, and we're going to quickly review just a little bit about what shapes us in our generations and how that connects to culture. We'll do a quick overview of the generations, and then we're going to jump into the gifts of generations and tie that into some key work activities that whether you work in a nonprofit, a manufacturing company, um, if you work in a service industry, these are work activities that we can all connect to uh, in what we do each and every day. A personal environmental scan. I wanted everyone to pause for a moment and just reflect on your growing up years. 
So in your family, did you have a mom and a dad at home? Or were you a single parent um, child? Um, did your rest of your family kind of, do they live around you or were they far away from you? Maybe you moved around a lot. So just reflecting on your family and those dynamics is part of what shaped you. Think about technology and what was present as you grew up. So did you um, work on a computer when you went to school? Or do you remember the joy and excitement when you were able to get your first calculator to take to school? Um, so just think about technology and what that was like for you growing up. Because again, each of these are forces or um, kind of environmental conditions that shape who you are. In addition to your family and technology, there's what was happening in the economy around you. So was there a recession, a depression? Was it an economic boom time? That impacts how you were shaped. Um, organizations, kind of what they look like. And finally, shared experiences. So as you reflect on all of these kind of dimensions of your growing up years, whether it was the music, whether it was the television programming, all of these factors creates and shapes your perspective and your expectations. And that connects to a really important concept when you come to work. Because the expectations that you bring into the workplace may um, coincide with what exists in the workplace, or more often than not, there can be a culture clash. So based on the way in which you grew up, you um, expect certain things. And what culture is, quite simply, is the way we're expected to do things around here. So kind of the how we behave. And each generation has different expectations because of the way they were raised. So the connection here is, depending upon the generation that you came from and those shaping environment, environmental shaping conditions, you may have completely different expectations when you come into the workplace. Now, one of my absolute favorite culture gurus is Dr. Edgar Schein. And in his book on organizational culture and leadership, he talks about these kind of three dimensions. So there's the things that we see. Those are the artifacts. And when we look around in culture, when we look at the younger generation, we might see things like piercing and tattoos and like clothing combinations that we don't necessarily agree with. And so there can be judgments made there, but we need to pursue a little bit deeper some underlying like what do they value and what are some of the basic assumptions and that varies from generation to generation so I'm giving you that overview because in our next webinar we're actually going to dig into the kind of culture that honors and includes all generations but we wanted to share that frame with you in making the connection between the various generations their shaping forces and the expectations they bring into the workplace so with that we wanted to do a quick review around what makes up all these crazy generations yeah so to again give a quick context to the conversation when we think about what this generational shift that's happening in the workplace Traditionalists built many of the organizations that exist. Boomers came in and shaped a lot of values and beliefs. Gen Xers entered, but being 20 million fewer, they couldn't make a lot of change. So they built a lot of systems that we use today. And they did tend to increase the amount of workplace flexibility. But what happened was then you had over 50 years, so over half a century in many organizations where there was a certain status quo, a certain um, expectations and culture had been formed. And then millennials stepped in and people are going, who, who is this? What do they want? It's so different because they grew up in a very different world and so the values and the things they're bringing to work can take different shapes from what older generations are used to and so when when we think about you know before you can even have a conversation around the generations what exactly is a generation typically they've been defined by a 20-year period of birth years and what we're seeing now is that shifting due to the rate of technology and generations are turning over around every eight years. And we can tell this a lot every time I go and speak to a group around um, 
the generational tension in the workforce. Often I'll have, I'll ask who's a millennial and they'll say, I'm a millennial, but I'm not really a millennial. And that's, that's that the older millennials. So the millennials are kind of dividing themselves in half and the older millennials grew up with an analog childhood, a digital adulthood. They played the Oregon trail at school and they still played outside growing up. And so they see the world a little bit differently and they, they are the Zennials. That's, that's the name being thrown around for them. And then when we think of kind of the millennials we hear about in the news, those are typically that later half. The other part that defines a generation is shared experience. So we just talked about the environmental scan. This is important when we're thinking about generations because we have to look at, based on when we were born, how that impacts the way we view the world and the way we view our families and the way we view work. So quickly, if we think about the traditionalists, they grew up during a war. The boomers, there were civil rights, hippies, Vietnam. Gen X watched the first teacher perish in space uh, when the space shuttle blew up. 9-11 changed the world for millennials. And then Gen Z can't go to school without having an underlying anxiety about a school shooting. It's also important when you're trying to figure out, you know, we have the years of the generations listed on the screen. It's important to understand that you can be a cusper. That means you might lie somewhere in the middle and that's okay. If, if you technically were born during a boomer year, you may feel more, more like you're a traditionalist. And sometimes that's because you had older siblings that pull you up into that older generation and, and help shape the way you think. Um, and then lastly, I wanna say that as we talk about the generations, it's important to remember we're not trying to stereotype or put people in a, in a box. And you actually, you're free to self-identify wherever you want, but really think about this as a framework through which to look at the shifts that have taken place in our culture and how we can begin to understand why people think so differently. And a lot of it has to do with these shared experiences that different generations have had over time. So today, we often talk about the negative and when you're in the office, you can hear, you know, oh, that's a millennial, that's a boomer, this is how I feel about them, boomers are impatient, or millennials drive me crazy, or Gen Xers just have their head in the ground, whatever it might be, there's a lot of negative talk. So today, what we really, really want to do is put all that aside. And we all know if you focus on the positive, it not only can lift you up, but it can lift others up. And so we want to really take a look at what are the gifts that each generation is bringing. So before we look at the gifts, um, I talked earlier about the fact that we are looking at some key processes. What are some of the basic things that we all do at work? And we broke it down into these three areas. So communicate, create, and collaborate. So communication we're defining as how we share or exchange information or ideas. And it can be done in a variety of ways. So as, as we were looking at exploring generationally how people communicate, it's everything from the way we speak you know, either in person, on the phone, to the nonverbals, whether it's memos. It's interesting. I was reflecting back at the beginning of my career. I was like, wow, what did we do before we had computers? Oh, yeah, we printed things out and we put them in inboxes. Holy cow, right? So um, we all have different experiences in terms of the way we communicate and sharing and exchanging information. And then in creation. So Again, whether you're in a service industry, a manufacturing industry, a nonprofit, like whatever kind of work you do, you're creating value for the world. And you're bringing, we're defining that as bringing something into existence. So you can create spreadsheets, you can create marketing campaigns, you can create products, whatever that is, we're going to look at how that differs from generation to generation. And finally, the last thing, um, Regardless of what you do in the workplace, there's some type of collaboration, which is how you work together to create 
to produce something. And so the components in that collaboration process are around teamwork, leadership, and a whole variety of other things. So that was our simplified way of really trying to understand what was happening in the workplace. And then we're gonna look generationally by generation um, what, what happens. So this is the audience opportunity. We'd love to hear from you. When you think about communication, again, when you're sharing ideas, exchanging information, what is the greatest pain that you feel? So is it the channel? Like you're trying to communicate in one channel and another generation like doesn't pay attention to that channel. Um, maybe it's you feel that a generation expects to receive information in a certain way and you think that's ridiculous. So as you reflect on communication in the workplace, any thoughts from this awesome and amazing audience about your greatest pain when it comes to communication? So we have some thoughts about uh, communication pain. One of, the, one of the comments is around, interesting. So um, the pain is I like, I like to have something tangible and people just email me and expect me to understand that that's actually been communicated when that's not the case. Interesting. So Catherine, I'm guessing we have a whole bunch more thoughts on communication in the context of generations. When we look at the boomers, well, first I want to say that communication is also, you know, one of the greatest rubs in the workplace is communicating across generations. And it's, it, it is, it's this different, different cultures coming together in the same space, trying to work toward the same goal. So even if, if we start to think about the generations as different countries, and we imagine that we're headed to India and we all of a sudden get there and we realize we don't speak Hindi. And so we don't know how to communicate. So we've got to step back and listen and learn and observe. And then we've got to practice Hindi if we're gonna stay there, right? We've got to learn the language. And if we take that concept into the workplace and we imagine the generations being different countries, it might help us start to begin to understand the need that we have for each generation to move toward the other and seek to understand so that those lines of communication can increase. For the boomers, the biggest gift I think they bring is the wisdom that comes with them. They've been along or they've been around for a really long time, not a really long time, sorry. They've been around for a while <laughs> and they get the wisdom that comes with life. With millennials, you know, they can often do an informational bypass and they can get a lot of knowledge right away, right? Knowledge is, is right instantly at our fingertips, but the boomers have the wisdom of life. And if we forget to acknowledge that or ignore that, we're really missing a huge piece of what they bring to the table. Boomers are also really good at understanding their context. When they entered the workforce, there were 80 million of them and they were all trying to get to the top. And so things were very political. So they had to learn how to communicate well with others. They also learned how to read body language. They're really good with nonverbals. I often have millennials who will say, yeah, I just met with my supervisor and she keeps telling me that um, is everything okay? And I told her everything was fine. And I asked them, well, what, what was your body saying? Because boomers are very quick to pick up on those underlying messages that sometimes the rest of us miss. They also are really good at thinking before they speak. They want time to process before they say something because when you're in a very political environment, you have to choose your words well. And so that is something we can all learn from them. Another thing I think the boomers do well in terms of communication is starting with the positive. They often start with the positive, they lean into the negative. So they'll, they'll build you up first and then they'll let you know perhaps you could, you could maybe work on this or change this. For Gen Xers, they really um, have become a bridge. They're often considered the middle child generation. 
They, and they often feel stuck in the middle of the boomers and the millennials and trying to help everyone get along. And they really do serve as bridge builders. They are the generation that grew up as latchkey kids. They came home, they took care of themselves. A lot of them may have made dinner for themselves. A lot more moms were in the workplace. Uh, so they had a lot more responsibility and they're a very flexible and adaptable generation. And so their ability to get along with generations on both sides of them and even understand them and adapt to their needs is a skill that we definitely don't want to look overlook. They also value relationship. So Gen Xers, the filter that they often look through is one of relationship. So they're going to work to build a positive relationship and to make sure that relationship stays intact over time. That's a very high value for most Gen Xers. They also just side note, they're the ones that brought emails into the workplace. So that's a, a way of communication that um, has obviously benefited all of us. For millennials, they look at relationship a little bit differently and they will often tell you what they think and often aren't afraid to tell you why they think that and they are actually requiring new levels of transparency and dialogue in the workplace which is a real gift in a lot of ways the millennials were the first ones to call the first generation to call their parents their friends and so when you think about as millennials you know when boomers were growing up kids were to be seen and not heard. When millennials were growing up, they were invited to at the dinner table to share about their day. They asked their parents about their day. They, they had back and forth dialogue. And so they're not afraid to give feedback. They welcome feedback. They want feedback. And it, it's, a real, it's, a, it's a gift for people to understand where they stand and where, where they need to head. And so don't be don't be uh, confused as to why millennials are expecting your input and wanting your attention because it's something that they're used to getting. Another way of communication for them is they often, you know, boomers like to have paper in front of them, something hard and tangible. And for millennials, it's very much about saving the planet and being organized in an efficient way. And so they help us organize the world digitally. And one of my former assistants who was a millennial, as soon as I would give her a receipt or an expense report or even an agenda, I would say, oh, where is that? And it was already online in, in a Google folder. And it was beautifully organized and no longer did I have these piles of paper, but it was something that it's taken me time to learn that she just automatically did without without thinking. For Gen Z, they are a generation, you know, they're just getting in the workforce. They've been there at the most two years. But what they're really looking for is authentic communication. And they want to communicate with people they can look in the eye and trust. And they also, if there's a way everything that exists in the physical world they want to be able to communicate in that way through a digital they're digital natives so there's a new word being thrown out it's called fidgetal so that means if it's in the physical world it's translated into the digital world they also another thing that they bring is just this idea of customization they want things they're used to things they really have access to things wherever they want, whenever they want. And so they're used to things making sense to them as a person. And so they want to express themselves uniquely as a person. And that's a real gift from a generation um, that they want to bring their true selves to the table. Another thing I'll just throw out there in terms of communication is their love for YouTube. Like 95% of them use YouTube on a regular basis and 50% 50 per, 50 of them say they can't live without it. So pay attention to YouTube if you wanna to relate to this generation and the gifts that they bring. 
So I love all the comments that people are sharing. And it's really fascinating because um, Clint shares that his greatest communication pain is unnecessary phone calls when a text or email would suffice. When Larry said his greatest pain is too many emails when a quick call will solve the issue. So again, generational preference about which, you know, how, what method do we use? What's going to be most beneficial? Um, Dave says, well, hey, it's really challenging because I don't want to offend anyone. And there's so many different expectations in the workplace around communication. What does that look like? And Charlie talks about, hey, I really want to listen um, to generations and understand them at all levels. So I want to bring, bring us back to this idea of communication in the workplace. And what is communication? Because so many times in working with leaders, I'll hear somebody say, oh, yeah, I communicated. And what the leader means is I shared something at a town hall or I sent an email to everybody. So the intent is I'm going to send a message. The receiver, whoever, whoever happens to attend the town hall meeting or get the email message, they now have been communicated with. But unfortunately, the intent of our communication and the impact that it makes is often very different. And the only way that you can know that is by getting feedback, which is why a key dimension of this generational um, difference around communication is paying attention. What, it, what am I intending to accomplish? And then checking in to say, is it having the intended impact? And so you need feedback. You need to ask questions. Um, something else I want to point out is if you see at the very bottom, We've got the sender and the receiver with very different context, which means that what I believe should happen and what you believe should happen, or even my understanding of what's expected around here is very different. And so what that leads to is the research that shows 90% of conversations don't actually achieve what they're intended to. And a key reason for that is missing out on that shared context. So in communicating between the generations, one of the first things you can do is establish shared context. So absolutely essential in understanding what matters to each generation. So the next um, kind of common work process we want to walk through generation by generation is creating. So, love to hear from all of you. What do you create in the workplace? What is your main focus as you are doing your daily work? What does that look like? What are you creating? And then I'm going to turn it back to Catherine, who's going to share with us from a boomer perspective what their view is on creating. Okay. When it comes to boomers in the workplace, boomers created the structure and brought in the values and beliefs of many organizations. And the, this structure led to their version of the American dream. And it's worked for many years. And so one of the things we have to remember is for boomers, um, they've brought a ton of value and allowed other people that have come behind them to flourish through what they've created. And so no matter what generation we're from, we need to acknowledge that and honor that. And while their version of the American dream may look different than what millennials or Gen Z are pursuing, it was incredibly important in plowing the road ahead so that the people behind them could be successful and have a different way of life. Boomers are also, when they're creating, they're very willing to sacrifice. They understand that hard work and, and success um, means that there, there's a, it necessitate, necessitates sorry, sacrifice, and they're willing to do that. They're a live, the live-to-work generation. Gen X created many of the systems and processes that exist in organizations today. And so they're connecting things and making sense of them and helping them flow within this structure that the boomers created. And Gen X, they very much want to do things more efficient, efficiently and they want to do things that make sense without all the politics. They're a very um, aligned generation in the sense of I want what I say to align with what I do. And so politics can sometimes feel frustrating to them. They just want to get to the point. 
And being latchkey kids, they tend to be more scrappy and more um, determined to figure things out for themselves. And when it comes to even the, the desire of working towards the American dream, they, Gen X really is, was trying to survive the American dream. And so when they're creating or they're, they're learning in order to create, they want to do it so that they can take that knowledge or what they're creating to other places. Because Gen X has grown up in a world where the rug could be pulled out from under them at any time. And so they, they think more in terms of portable careers. So how, what can I learn from this experience? What can I learn from this project? Um, so that I can take it with me when, I'm, when I either choose or I'm forced to go on to the next place. Millennials very much want to not work harder. They want to work smarter. They want to maximize efficiency. Because why waste time when there is a better way to do it? And they inherently often know a better way to do it. And sometimes those of us who are in older generations can feel very frustrated because we've done certain things a certain way for quite some time. And so when someone younger comes in and says, hey, I can do that for you in half the time you're doing it, we can really feel devalued and, um, and overlooked. And we need to embrace what they're bringing because they really do understand the world in a way, in a different way than older generations. And so how do we give them voice to help maximize efficiency? I've had some millennials tell me that they're forced, literally forced to stay at their desk all day. And this often comes from, they have to put in their time. They have to, they have to do their hours. And for a millennial, that's like death. And one of the surest ways to get them to move on is, is to make them do something like that because it just, it doesn't make sense for them. Um, for Gen Z, they are, and again, they're just entering the workforce, but they come with their Gen X parents' ideas and ideals. They're very entrepreneurial. They're problem solvers. They're bringing a new way of thinking. They're digital natives, so they've never known the world without technology. They don't know what it was like, so they intuit much of what the rest of us have had to learn. They also are... Um, when, when they're creating anything or when the organization they're working for is creating something, one of the big mantras in their head is reduce, reuse, recycle. That is something that permeates almost all of what they do. Um, they really care about the people and the planet. So if, you, if that is an integral part of your business, you need to make sure you're sharing that and you need to help them understand how they can get involved in making the world a better place by being with you. A quick story about a Gen Z intern we recently had. She, um, the, the small building we were in at the time didn't have recycling and the owner had no interest in doing that. And she was like, okay, well, um, I'm going to just pack up the recycling in my car and take it by the plant on my way home. It was not a big deal that the owner didn't want to do it. That's fine, but this is what I'm going to do in order to get this done because I really care about it. And so pay attention to their passion and their drive and simply the fact that they're real go-getters. So thanks for that overview. And I love it. Clint shared that I like to create organization and processes and thrive in a workplace where I can be part of making things more efficient. Hmm. What generation do you think Clint might be in, Catherine? I think he's a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so hopefully, as you've heard the description of each of the generations, there are gifts. And the question, instead of focusing on the friction, is how can we honor those gifts and appreciate um, what each generation brings to the workplace? So we often hear conversations that occur like, you know, well, those millennials, they don't have any experience. Why, can, why should they be listened to? And the reality is everybody brings gifts. So our encouragement is through communication, through listening and asking questions, how can we better understand what those gifts are? And it goes in all directions. 
right? So how can the boomers and uh, Gen, Gen Xers appreciate the millennials and the Gen Z and vice versa? Because everybody brings something to the workplace. The next work process we wanna talk about is collaboration. And would love to hear from everybody as you think about collaboration. Um, how do you do that? How do you prefer to work with others? Because it varies from one group to another. So as you think about collaboration, um, please go ahead and type in the chat panel, how do you like to work with others? And then Catherine will jump in and start sharing generation to generation how that is. So Clint says, I like to work with others in teams. Oh. A Gen Xer, there you yeah. go. <laughs> and Dave's, yeah. Dave says, I like to work alone and then collaborate. So give me some space so I can figure things out and then I'll come join you. And Dave, what generation are you? So Dave, Dave, I think you'd probably be in the boomer. I'm not sure you might be um, identifying with some traditionalists, maybe some Gen Xers, but I'm guessing you fall into boomers. Oh yeah, you said boomers oh, and counting. <laughs> <laughs> great, well, let's, let's talk some more about the boomers. I think that's a great way to, to start us off, Dave. Thanks, that work alone and then collaborate. And the fact that boomers are very um, goal-oriented, ready to move to results, someone takes charge to get you there and often they they appreciate consensus at the end of a process um, there is a leader and the leader has ultimately the last word but they like to get everyone on the same page and they may even start getting people on that page before they even enter meetings because that that the politics of the office are, are swimming around um, which some generations don't quite understand what's happening when they get pulled into those conversations. Boomers also often hold on to their norms. They're used to this is the culture we have set. This is how it works. And so they expect others to understand how to collaborate within those spaces. And so one of the things we often remind people of is you have to, you have to make sure that these different cultures, these different generations, these different countries all understand the rules and the expectations that they are supposed to play by. And if they don't, um, we have to make sure that we get them up to speed. One of the things that I, a trend I'm seeing is even with professional associations. For boomers, a lot of them got to where they were through collaboration and networking with peers or colleagues who are in the same field as they are. And a lot of them feel very frustrated that millennials don't seem to care about professional associations and they just can't understand why. And they're, but they're starting to say, okay, this isn't working. So how do we recreate these so they're innovative and experiential for these younger generations? Because the things that were important to us in the past aren't important in the same ways today. With Gen X, I'm a Gen Xer. I don't think I said that earlier, but that's what I am. So we like to make things happen. And when we're collaborating, you can typically always count on a Gen Xer to take responsibility for things. It's often hard, uh, again, because of the latchkey influence, we just figure out a way to get it done. And so one of the beautiful things about a Gen Xer is that um, they rarely can even allow themselves to walk away without feeling some sense of responsibility to getting towards the end goal. They definitely, when it comes to leadership on teams, they are all about leading themselves. They're self-motivated. They hold themselves accountable. Um, and one of the things I think that often is happening right now is there's a lot of focus on millennial employees and how to keep them and even how to keep them happy. And Gen Xers feel somewhat overlooked because they feel like they've been this bridge for a while. They've worked hard, they've done their time. And, um, and they are responsible for a lot of things. So make sure that you're not overlooking your Gen X employees. 
Oh, and a quick funny story, another intern, well, no, this wasn't an intern, this was an employee, millennial employee I had. When she first started, she really had a hard time taking initiative. And I would give her projects and she would need a lot of, you know, feedback or interaction along the way. And by the time she left, she had a make it happen <laughs> sign that she put up on the wall because she had learned, you know, the Gen X way of how I was communicating. And so that was kind of our joke of what, what I expected from my generation and how she was learning to do that herself, to take, take control of her environment and make things happen. And now she's actually started her own business and is doing quite well. So she's making it happen. For millennials, when it comes to collaborating, they really want to break down all these silos. They honestly don't understand why there's all these silos or the politics that are behind them. And they think if we're all trying to get to this goal, why don't we all work together to get there? And um, they're very much, as I mentioned earlier, it has to do with shared leadership. The leader holds a role. They facilitate the process, but they don't have any more importance than anyone else or any more value. In fact, one of the guys I interviewed for my dissertation, a millennial, he compared a leader to the brain. So the brain is supposed to send and receive signals and adapt according to what the needs of the room are or the people around them. And I thought that was a really great example of what leadership has become in the workplace today. If, if you're working in a space with a lot of millennials and trying to relate to them, it's important that you don't go in as a figure who knows it all or who is um, self-important, but that you go in as somebody who wants to learn and come alongside and equip and empower. Another thing I think is important with millennials and collaboration is, um, when they talk about teams, this also came out of my research, they compared teams to a salad bowl. So everything's all mixed together, working together to come up with this, this exquisite taste in your mouth, but each piece of the salad is still its own piece. So lettuce is still lettuce, tomatoes are still tomatoes. So everyone's still a unique individual, but they're coming together um, to get the job done. Another example that a millennial gave me was about permaculture. So permaculture is more of an organic way of farming where you might have strawberries growing next to onions. And her point was that we all bring our strengths to a team and those strengths can help the other people in the team be successful. So just like the pungency of the onions would kill the bugs that were getting on the strawberries, they would help equip and everything could grow well within that environment. So they're very much about helping each other, but they really want to work out of a place of strength. For Gen Z, again, they are the do-it-yourself generation. And with 95% of them loving YouTube, that's because they go to YouTube to figure out how to do anything, which is something the rest of us, we had to go to our mom or our grandparents or our parents, whoever it might be. Um, they can just go online and figure it out. So if they are built in um, or bought into your purpose, and you give them good direction and a framework within which to work, they will often take off and make sure it happens and do it really well. So a funny story before we talk about purpose. Um, Bruce, the last time we had a session when we were working on the guiding principles, um, I remember one of the team members was talking about how he cooked Thanksgiving turkey and it was a result of him learning how to cook a turkey on YouTube. So exactly what you just shared, Catherine, there was no call home to mom, like, how do I do this? Or what's the recipe? You know, and I remember cookbooks, you know, like we'd like pull out a cookbook maybe, but he actually just went on YouTube and learned how to make his, make his turkey for Thanksgiving. Awesome. <laughs> yes. So in this work process, the space around leadership, the space around working in teams, um, we're looking at this unifying idea around purpose because 
if all generations can agree on the purpose of this team, the purpose of this project, the purpose of this workplace, like why are we here? Why is this being expected? That unites and bring generations together. When you focus only on the what, like what we have to do, or um, you know, what are you producing? The what is insufficient. So this is really our um, kind of the overlying concept when it comes to um, paying attention to the generational gifts in the space of collaboration. So we want to review again in connecting back to communication, collaboration, creation. What are the actions that we can walk away from this webinar and collectively use in order to benefit from the gifts of each generation? So it, just a quick review, creating the shared context, appreciating all gifts, and then defining a common purpose are the key things. So as we look at that, creating a shared context. So we talked about the fact that when a sender is sharing a message and the receiver has a different context, chances are it's going to be a missed communication opportunity. So how to create shared context and how to be more successful in your communication among generations is first of all, recognize we all have assumptions. Um, that's just a given. And pay attention to what they are. So rather than acting on your assumptions, our tip is start with questions. So this is probably the number one thing in coaching leaders is we say, ask first and then tell. Whereas our conditioning is tell first and then ask. So start with asking questions. And then the next um, application in terms of creating shared context is verify understanding. So that's that feedback loop. Um, some of the stem phrases or the, the statements that you can use is help me understand. And then you can fill in the blank. Is this what you meant? Or what I heard you say is this. And it gives the, op the person an opportunity to change or correct what you said. And it's interesting, this, this is so important in every context. I remember facilitating a strategy session with a board, and I was kind of verbally processing what we, what we had all agreed on, and then I wrote it out, and it was like, oh, no, that wasn't what we said. We wanted this. So in all situations from communication, you want to create the shared context and verify that you have that common understanding. Um, the next uh, kind of gift and way of using the gift is appreciating the gifts. So what do we mean by this when we're saying, hey, you really need to appreciate the gifts each generation brings to the workplace? Um, this is a little tip that I've actually used in a variety of different meetings and situations. At the beginning, actually ask people, um, what gift do you bring to this? So maybe not every, you know, status update meeting or whatever, but it's really fascinating to hear person to person them be able to share the gifts that they bring. So that's a way that you can um, begin appreciating what each individual brings to a team or um, even in a one on one conversation. So start by asking rather than assuming. And secondly, be intentional. So Catherine walked through a lot of great generalizations about each generation. And once you understand the gift an individual brings, then be intentional about honoring and appreciating it. And finally, our last tip is creating that common purpose. So this is the answering of the why, and it's not just from an overall organization standpoint, you know, the bigger purpose or why of our organization, but also, why did we make this decision? Why is this meeting happening? Why are we doing this instead of that? Um, by helping make everybody clear on the purpose, it creates shared, shared understanding. And it's so incredibly important and beneficial in being able to appreciate the gifts from generation to generation. So in, um, in terms of what's happening next, um, we're going to be doing a webinar on January 15th where we connect the information we shared in webinar one around um, each generation with what we just shared with you today on the gifts of generations. Um, in this webinar, we're actually going to talk about kind of the clashes that occur and creating a workplace culture 
that honors each of the generations. So I'm really excited about that. But before we do, um, I wanted to open the lines. Do we have any questions or any, um, any insights people wanted to share or learnings people had as a result of our conversation? So just um, open the, the chat to any questions that might come up. And um, while we're waiting for anybody to type in and share the question that they might have and like to get answered from Catherine, um, I would like to pose one to you, Catherine, and this is something I hear very, in very common. How do I get my ideas heard? And so if you could answer that from all, like kind of all generational points, right? This connects back to communication because we all want to be heard in the workplace. What does that look and feel like from a boomer to a millennial or a millennial to a boomer or the Gen X that gets overlooked? What, how does that happen? How do I get my ideas heard? Yeah, I think, First, it's a great question, Donna. First, we have to understand, you know, seek to understand the culture we're in, right? What, what has, what are the expectations that are already in place? A am I, what am I discovering about that? You know, I've worked with millennials who um, rapidly moved up the ladder once they started to understand how boomers best receive information. And rather than texting their boss, they started to stop by the office in person or they started to make a phone call. And the way their boss received them drastically changed. Just that simple um, moving toward that generation and what they expect and need, desire made a huge difference and probably not just in that day but in their the longevity of their career with that organization um, so i think that to me is the the biggest thing is understanding the culture that you're in and then working um, to work well to build bridges with the people that are in it with you and i think Boomers, one thing with boomers, as they are now starting to leave the workforce, and there's lots of talk around knowledge management and what, how do we keep the wisdom that they have before they leave the workplace. And so one of the things people are doing, because a lot of boomers don't want to sit down and type up a bunch of stuff that they, that they have in their head. They just want to share it. They're used to to sharing stories verbally versus typing everything up. And so making um, for boomers to be heard, for all the wisdom to, to get out of their heads is to do, do videos, have them talk over videos and share their information and knowledge in that way. And that now it's being transferred to digital form where millennials and Gen Z would love to hear it, right? Put it up on YouTube, that's where Gen Z goes. So there's a lot of learning that, that can take place in that way and the boomer's voice doesn't have to be lost. Excellent. And then what about, because I, I've um, seen this in workplaces where millennials are like, they're just not paying attention to me. So I think what I heard you say is um, rather than feeling frustrated that your ideas aren't getting heard, understand the best channel for the person you're trying to reach so that you're communicating in a way they can receive it. Exactly. So Clint asked the question, how do I get the buy-in of the common purpose across generations? Great question. I think um, working with each generation to know what, why are they there? What even brings them around the table? Because even when you look at you know, boomers were living for the American dream, right? Gen Xers were trying to survive the American dream. Millennials really want purpose and um, want work-life balance now, right? They don't want to sacrifice everything and wait until they're in their 60s to travel the world. They want to do it now. And so what is, what is the end goal? What are people desiring to get out of that specific um, teamwork or collaboration? Where is it going to take them? And how do you start to build those bridges so that each one can make sense of the purpose? Mm -hmm. Or is the purpose large enough where, you know, maybe you're trying to um, in, improve the environment, right? So finding the true why of why the organization exists and reminding people of that so they don't get lost in the little details that of their job that they might have to do day to day, but keeping the overall purpose that is really meaningful to everybody mm -hmm. in front of everyone all the time. 
Excellent answer. And I think questions can be a really powerful way of uncovering that, kind of creating creating common purpose by understanding what matters most. Like what, you know, like you said at the beginning, why is this important to you? Um, one of my absolute favorite questions is what does success look like? So whether it's on a project you're working on or even in an organization, I remember uh, leading a culture conversation and somebody said, I just want to know what game we're playing. Like if I'm in the Super Bowl and how do I know if I've, if I've won or not, right? So how, how do we create that is by asking questions so that we all understand it. So excellent input. And um, what's next for everyone? Uh, we're going to be sharing an email. You'll get the slides that we just walked through, a recording of the webinar, and then um, resources. And then we'll also provide a link for you to sign up. We hope that all of you can join us on January 15th. And we're really excited to share kind of a model or structure around culture and what does that need to look like so that we are including all generations and appreciating their gifts. So um, if you have any comments, we'd love to hear from you. We're going to say a great big thank you. And Clint, I appreciate your feedback um, in answering the question. You said um, you can really, at, learn, if you learn to ask more questions, you'll definitely um, improve in all areas. And I think that's an encouragement to all of us. So I'll leave that for everyone. Um, it's very easy to make assumptions and simply act out of those assumptions and by asking questions in whatever field you're in, whatever level you are in an organization and whatever generation you happen to find yourself in. If you ask questions, you'll find yourself being able to appreciate more the person that you're engaging with and find that common purpose that you can both work from. So with that, I'd like to say thanks to everyone. I uh, hope you have a magnificent rest of your day. And we look forward to sharing in January um, the ideas that we have around culture and creating a generationally inclusive culture.